You hate to see it. You hate to see it. You know, whenever I started, uh, whenever I started thinking about doing this little quarantine project, did I want to do a podcast? Did I want to do a YouTube channel? What, you know, I didn't know which direction I wanted to go with it. But I did know one thing. I did not want to talk about the X's and O's of wrestling. I didn't want to do a bunch of breakdowns. I didn't want to do a bunch of predictions. And all that stuff's fine. We might do that here and there. But the main thing that I want to do with this channel and with all of our platforms is I want to cover the T. And boy, do we have the T. Or should I say, girl, do we have the T. When I was trying to make the title for this video, I was trying to think, you know, what should I name it? Should I name it Pat Downey vs. Pat Downey? Should I name it Pat Downey vs. The World? Should I name it Pat Downey vs. Flow Wrestling? And I decided I was going to name it Armageddon. Not because it's one of the best movies of all time. The definition of Armageddon is the last battle between good and evil before Judgment Day. Now think about that. The last battle before good and evil before Judgment Day. But before we get into the meaning of that, July 25th, 2020, Flow Wrestling is set to have a major wrestling card. They're finally giving us some matches. We just had Rumble on the Rooftop, great event put on by Fight TV. And now Flow Wrestling is doing their own card. RBY versus Jack Mueller, Sammy Alvarez versus Vito Arujao, Luke Pletcher versus Anthony Ashnall, David Taylor versus Patrick Downey, and Kyle Dake versus Frank Camizo. Now the elbow that knocked over all of the T stems from the Luke Pletcher versus Anthony Ashnall match. Anthony Ashnall was set to face Luke Pletcher. Anthony Ashnall actually had an injury, therefore he had to withdraw himself from the stacked card. Everybody was trying to figure out who was going to replace him. And that's when Flo dropped the bomb of Darian Caldwell was going to make his return. He's a Bellator champion, successful MMA fighter, former national champion. And once that match got announced, the Twitter wrestling world decided to go into a frenzy. And everybody was questioning, you know, why isn't there any Greco matches? No love for Greco. But specifically, no love for the women's freestyle team. And that's kind of where this whole thing started, right? A bunch of tweets were coming in in support of the women, in support of the Greco team. And that's when Sarah Hildebrandt put out a tweet saying that she was contacted to wrestle on the Flow Wrestling card. And she declined for multiple reasons. The main one being that the risk overwhelmingly outweighed the reward. We got a bunch of support from other wrestling community members. Except for one. Some call him the bad boy of wrestling. Some call him the Lizard King, and some call him Homeless. But most people know him by Patrick Downey, a.k.a. PD3. And that's when PD3 himself entered the chat. Patrick Downey decided to reply with a simple, good story, bruh. Sarah Hildebrandt then goes back to her Twitter where she puts out a tweet of her own saying, allow me to demonstrate the power of exposure. Pat Downey has literally done nothing, continues to do nothing, but the wrestling community has given him quite the platform in which he rightfully uses to his advantage to further grow his brand and opportunities. And then she replies to her own tweet saying, it is funny he bashes us for fighting for exposure when his success is very based solely on that. To which he replies, I never bashed you or anyone close to us. Probably doing more to grow women's wrestling than you, honey. Stay in your lane. She replies, no, you're not, Pat. You have to understand that those tweets hurt women's wrestling, which inevitably will hurt wrestling as a whole. Staying in my lane will not create change, and there needs to be. Pat then takes to his own Twitter account where he comes out saying, everyone salty about the truth. Sorry, ain't no one trying to watch that boring ass sh at Flow Wrestling, don't get paid off equality. They a business, and in order for all parties involved, they must produce the most exciting matchups. This is a business. Let them do their job. To which a self-proclaimed God at Green Toe the God, a.k.a. Dylan Palacio, a.k.a. the homeless wrestler, puts out a tweet defending pd 3 statements, not to be confused with defending pd 3 to which he tweets, y'all really going to let her say anything? Sorry, but Juco wrestlers are not nothing, Sarah. Many UFC champions and great people have came from there. Division I All-Americans are not nothing. 
All our male freestyle world medalists were one. U.S. Open champs are not nothing. Pat Downey then clarifies that he would pay to watch Ali Reagan wrestle Helen Maroulis. Same with Adeline Gray and Erica Wiebe or anyone against at Victoria underscore Vortex. But in general, the average fan ain't paying for women's wrestling. Hashtag sorry, not sorry. Hashtag feelings lie, numbers don't. Now, if the wheels weren't off the wagon already, in my opinion, this tweet gets all the trains off the tracks. Pat Downey throws Penn State's 133-pounder Roman Bravo Young all the way underneath the bus. Roman Bravo Young sends one of world team member James Green's tweets privately to Patrick Downey's direct message box where the tweet says, you're right, they can have anybody they want. That being said, it would be beneficial to the sport of wrestling to have all styles participate. They could have an all Greco card or a women's card, but then I'd hear about how you wish you were wrestling too. Now, that tweet was in reference to one of Pat Downey's tweets. I'll post the screenshot right here, but I don't want to read it all because it goes down a deep thread that, quite frankly, I don't have time for right now. But anyways, RBY sent that tweet into Pat Downey's DMs and responded with, no one going to buy a Greco card. <laughs> to which Pat Downey asked for RBY's public support, where he asked him, tweet it? Question mark. And then he says, oh, you scared to speak your mind, LLS. Okay, pause for a second. I got to find out what LLS means because it's referenced in almost every single tweet. <laughs> Laughing like shit. Okay, back to the video. July 11th, 2020. I've said this before on the videos. You play stupid games. You win stupid prizes. Pat Downey, stupid game. Got him a stupid prize. The New Jersey Regional Training Center cuts ties with Pat Downey. So then Pat Downey takes to his Twitter again, and he formally quits wrestling. But don't worry, that's actually not true. He ends up tweeting later on, but stay tuned. So meanwhile, while Sarah Hildebrandt and PD3 are going back and forth, Julie Salata or Julie Salata or Julie Salata, here's the thing. I recently just got in this media game. I don't know a lot of people yet. I made a video a while back. I mispronounced someone's name. I'm trying not to do it again. I probably got some of these names wrong. Bear with me. All right. Julie, the USA World Team member and 2020 Olympic hopeful, goes on a Twitter terror where she eventually ends up calling out an anonymous flow employee for asking one of her wrestlers for some bikini pics. I don't know. I'm just reading it. <laughs> Which that gets the Twitter world going, kind of going even harder at flow. They originally were taking the heat for not having Greco, not having women's, and now they got to deal with one of their employees trying to get some nudies, not nudies, bikini pics. Regardless, questionable gesture. I don't know. Back to Pat Downey. Pat Downey then fires up the Twitter account again. He tweets at Donald Trump. He says, literally all women were offered matches by Flow Wrestling and turned them down. Now all complaining there's no women's wrestling. I'm out here wrestling with anyone, anytime, anywhere. And then professes that cancel culture can't cancel me if I cancel myself. I thought this was America. What happened to my First Amendment? Is it just me or is this country quickly turning communist? Regardless, if speaking my mind cost me my job, then... So be it. I am what I am, and that's all that I am. I'll never stop being me. Emoji, emoji, emoji. He then is the second person in this video reference that references himself as a biblical character. He says, remember, they crucified Christ. Why? Because Jesus told the truth. If God is with you, it does not matter who is against you. Armageddon? Judgment Day? Are you getting it now? Pat Downey finally issues an apology. I'm going to post a screenshot right here. You can pause it and read the whole thing. Too many words for me to read right now. Okay, next slide. So then it finally comes out what the girls were offered to get paid. It comes out that they were offered to get around $1,000 at best. After Pat Downey's apology, Wrestle Like a Girl tweeted out that there was a great phone call today between at Wrestle Like a Girl CEO Wrestling Sally and at Pat Downey. We're looking forward to working with Pat Downey and all of the wrestlers to grow wrestling. Full stop. Hashtag United We Rise. Hashtag Grow the Sport. To which after that, even though he had already said that he quits wrestling and he said hashtag goodbye wrestling, 
Pat Downey goes back to his Twitter and says, see you at the Olympic trials at Magic Man Penn State unless USA Wrestling stops me from competing because of my opinions. Sends another tweet. Since Flow Wrestling won't include any women wrestling matches or men's Greco, I have decided to withdraw from the card. I'm sad because I really look forward to competing with my new at Barbarian Wear at Wrestle Like a Girl singlet. FYI. Now, earlier I said that he dropped a bomb when he threw RVY under the bus. Now he's throwing the rest of the people under the bus. He's putting out their paychecks. He says, for your information, I get 10K. David Taylor gets 20K. Dakin Camizo each get 50000 each. When you think about what that compares to with the women, $1,000 for the women, minimum ten k for the men. And again, I don't know what uh, some of the prelims or whatever you want to call it are getting paid. It could be around 1000 I'm not sure. I only know what's out on Twitter. I don't have any behind-the-scenes news. I'm an outsider in this game, so I'm just reading off Twitter. I'm bringing it to you. Now remember, Pat Downey had a very short-lived feminist movement within himself. It came to an end when he... Decided to go back to Sarah Hildebrandt, his original nemesis, his original Twitter foe. He quote retweeted one of her tweets where he said, Sarah, I would whip your ass, you goofy little wet nugget. All right. Well, there you have it. Sometime after all this, Full Wrestling then announces that PD3 is no longer on the July 25th card. To which this was a surprise to nobody because the wrestling world already had all the news. So then the wrestling world, we kept waiting to see how the Flow members, how the Flow bros were going to react to all this. Christian Piles put out a tweet, finally, where he said, oh wait, okay, never mind. He is just talking about a Flow interview between Darian Caldwell and his relationship with Kale Sanderson. Okay, I don't know. Uh, that's more like it. The funky man himself, Ben Askren, decides to tweet, train wrecks are fun to watch, which has me curious. That is a very interesting take coming from him. Granted, being that he is on Flow Radio Live, in which the last Flow Wrestling drama, he was very heavy in favor of Flow, which makes sense because he's employed or he's a independent contractor for them, where he basically says that they don't need to apologize for anything for some other rumble on the rooftop stuff. I got a whole video on that. I'll link it in the comments below. Regardless, that's an interesting take. He also recently did an interview with Ariel Hawani. His numbers were skyrocketed. He was proud of that. He was putting screenshots up. And so now that all this is kind of taking place, it's interesting because he puts out a he puts out a tweet earlier in the day where he says. I think I overtake at Ariel Hawani in the next 12 months as the biggest personality in MMA. So is he trying to leave the wrestling media world space because he's done with it and he's trying to go to the MMA space? Does he want to work at Stalemates now? We're not hiring. So in conclusion, we gained almost 100 followers today. We put out a bunch of memes. Check them out. Twitter at Stalemate Show. Instagram at stalemate show. You can email us stalemate show at gmail.com. But there's some stuff that I decided to leave out of the video, not because I don't believe them or not because I think it's fake news or anything. We just don't actually report on anything that's not already out there. For instance, all these tweets, I'm not, I don't have any insider scoop. I'm just, you know, I'm trying to put it in all one linear timeline. Hopefully I got it for the most part right. But everything is already out there. We're just kind of putting it in one place for you guys. So if you're wondering why I left out some of these Twitter rumblings, or if you're curious what some of the other Twitter rumblings are that I'm kind of uh, alluding to, get yourself a Twitter account. Find yourself your local wrestling forum. You can find all the tea in there. Matter of fact, I'll link the wrestling room below. They're actually the wrestling forum that I got most of these screenshots of these tweets, being that some of them got deleted, and it's a lot of digging and a lot of researching to try to find them and try to find them in the correct order. Regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're new to the channel, we have weekly content, interviews, um, memes. We have these takes like this. I'm really enjoying doing this. Don't forget to leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like, and please, please, please subscribe. Most of the people watching our videos are not subscribed. We're trying to reach 200 subscribers. We're at about a little over 150 right now. Let's keep the train rolling, baby. Thank you